I welcome everyone uh, to the class of reservoir simulation. In the previous lecture, we talked about the flow equations that are used in reservoir simulators. And uh, today's talk of, topic is about the discretization. What is discretization and how it is used in reservoir simulation? These are our topics right now. Discretization, types of discretization, and what is special discretization. Uh, well, let's first define what is discretization. Reservoir discretization means that the reservoir is described by a set of grid blocks, grid points whose properties, dimensions, boundaries, location in the reservoirs are well defined. So let me show you the picture of what is the discretization. For example, we have a well like reservoir like this one. Now this reservoir uh, is big. Let's say is is uh, 100, uh, 10 kilometer. Then here yeah. this is the length of this as the reservoir but for example what is the pressure at this point what is the pressure at this point what is the pressure at this point what is the pressure? how much oil we have uh, how much how much oil we have here how much oil we have here how much oil we have here or how much it's a 10 kilometer so by considering it a one body one reservoir it is very hard to to detect the properties in all over the reservoir separately so what we do in this case uh, we same reservoir we have here we have the same reservoir what we do we divide into the small parts we make a blocks like this one So you can say we we divide it into uh, illegal blocks. So now, for example, you are dealing with the uh, flow rate. So each of this grid block, this one, this one, this one, has its own address in X and Y. For example, this is X2, Y1. For example, this one is X5, Y1. This is X5, Y2. This is X5, Y3. X5, Y4. X6, Y5. So now each of this grid block has address and we can define pressure, flow rate, saturation, porosity, permeability for each grid block separately. Here it was 10 km, we couldn't define the porosity separately for for because porosity probably is not uniform. Saturation is not same in all the reservoir. Maybe upper port is gas, middle is oil and lower is water. But in this case, how you can define when you have only one body? So what we do, we divide into the blocks and we call it a discretization so this the process of converting this big reservoir into the small pieces of blocks we call it a discretization now in this discretization yeah so now in this discretization it all the proper dimension boundaries location in the reservoir are well defined in this case and now what is this discretization like this is the physically we divide into the blocks now discretization process we actually do two kinds of special discretization we call it and time based discretization the special discretization is based on the distance we will talk about it and then time is based on the time steps now we have two kinds of discretization as we discussed here uh, we have uh, we have a special one discretization and we have time discretization to discretization we have here we have to define the geometry of the reservoir cell dimension how big or small the cells are and the compressibility here we based on time because for example you are producing a well uh, you are producing this well okay now pressure initially right now here right now maybe is 2000 psi but after two years pressure becomes 1000 psi so based on the time actually the situation is changing so we have to based on the time we have to change 
discretize it and check what is coming tomorrow what is coming after we have to predict future and we have to look at the past also do the history matching also so time discretization is important the special discretization means for example again you have the this situation of the well and the saturation here or the saturation here they are not same they are different or saturation here or saturation here maybe here may be oil here may be water this may be water this may be oil or above may be a gas so saturation is also changing so we have to divide this into the small grid blocks like this one we divide into the grid blocks and then we define the its properties separately so we divide into like this one we define them and the same is then we have a big reservoir and uh, we convert into the small grid blocks now we have one dimensional grid block two dimensional and three dimensional here you can see one dimension the one dimension means whatever fluid we have it is moving in a straight line ahead or behind so here you can see either it is going in this direction or it is going in this direction so we call it a one dimension one then we have two dimensions one here in from here the fluid can flow in this direction or this direction or in this direction or in this direction so it has two direction either it can go in x direction or it go in y direction so it is two dimensional grid block in the reservoir our real reservoirs are actually 3d three dimension so it can go in in this direction in this direction and in this direction it has three directions so this is the one directional system grid and we call it a grid blocks grid systems so this is the one dimensional this is the two dimensional and this is the three dimensional grid blocks that we have here well the whatever grid size we use usually we use the rectangular kind of thing like them use the rectangular in form and sometimes they are in size regular sometimes they are not regular it depends on the saturation and properties and so on and uh, for the one dimensional we define the grid block in only x direction and x we define it using uh, an x and uh, x or if we have two dimensional one as i showed you in the previous video like uh, previous slide and x by n y or in the in three dimension we have x y and z in three dimension so so here you can see we have only x direction here we have x and we have y here we have x we have y and we have z x y z three dimension we have here in this case now each grid block has the address for example address in this one address here is we define it by i j k so for example the first one here is the one 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 or for example this one is one two this one for example is one three this one for example is one four and this one for example is four one this one for example this is the address of it so we can set up properties based on their addresses and then do our simulation job 4 3 4 4 so here this is the x in one direction because and, uh, and this is in x direction and this is in y direction and this is in z direction so for example this one is 1 1 1 this one is One, one, two, two. This one is actually three. This one is actually one, one, two, and the third one. This one was three, the last one. So that's how we define the uh, the grid blocks and their addresses. Now, another important parameter here. is the transmissibility transmissibility values and we have to find the transmit block how the values are transmitted from here to here from this block to this block to this block to this block i mean the fluid is flowing here in this direction 
in this direction or maybe fluid is flowing in this direction so we have to define the porosity permeability and other based on using this transmissibility values and so on this is the discretization here you can see now how we define this uh, discretization in x block let's look at it this is important slide yes so when we have three different grid blocks for example here we have uh, this is the number one grid block this is two and this is three so we have three different grid blocks how we put the address well these grid blocks are represented by x and i here you can see the symbol x and I. they are represented by x and i or you can say delta x and i so when we move ahead we call it the forward uh, block this is you can say the forward block and when we move backward this one is called backward block so what we do we originally we represent with xi so the forward block is represented by xi plus 1 so x x i plus 1 as you see here or delta x i plus 1 and the boundaries are represented by i plus 1 by 2 1 by 2 so these are the addresses for example now you have another you put another block here here for example so this will be this will be x i plus 2 i plus 2 or x minus 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 and so on so this is x minus 1 over 2 this is the boundary we represent by x uh, i plus 1 over 2 or i minus 1 in the backward one or backward block or reverse block we call it sometimes so these are how we represent the uh, in the x direction as the focus is on block of i so we start from the block i then we go for i plus 1 and backward is i minus 1 that's how we show the discretization as i say we have three different dimensions we have one dimension we have two dimension x and y and we have x y and z three dimension here so in one dimension we have two neighboring blocks i mean fluid can flow from here to here or here to here but in the two dimension we have four blocks to to look at so means more equations four blocks here we have four blocks and in this one we have six blocks in three dimension the fluid is flowing in six those neighboring blocks in x y and z, z planes now we talk about the time discretization calculation of production data for example production rate today is let's say hazard barrels per day maybe after two days the production may be 900 or maybe 1100 so with the time we always say the reservoir is alive so reservoir situation is always changing so what we have to do we have to do the changes based on the time also we have to do the time discretization also divide the production into the time steps discrete time steps so now in this one we do the discretization based on t because t represents the time step that we are talking about here in this case now when we discretize how we like these are the you know the i showed you the, the blocks and you know but this discretization how it is done you remember in the last uh, lecture i talk about the black oil model uh, equation well that equation is is discretized using the taylor series using the finite difference or finite element most probably uh, it is discretized using the Taylor series. In the last lecture, uh, in, in the last lecture, in the last lecture, uh, we reviewed some flow equations for single phase and multi phase, multi phase black oil model. And these equations are then discretized using Taylor series. Now our next uh, lecture is about how this discretization is done 
on those equations so see you in the next lecture stay tuned and be with us in the lecture thank you and have a nice day